In this week's video, I gracefully fall onto a pile of wood and power tools and somehow come out with a coffee table. Tiny little disclaimer, I am a beginner carpenter. I watch really cool carpenters on YouTube do amazing things. I try to emulate them and I fail miserably as you will discover in the course of this video. Take this build as more of an inspiration for your board game table and less so as a step by step. All right, with that out of the way, as some of you may remember, in the past I created a board game table, and as probably fewer of you remember, I also destroyed that board game table. Yes, it was quite sad. The issue with that table was that it was rickety and it was massive and it wasn't used enough to justify its large footprint in my somewhat small-ish basement. So I want to make a new one now, but what are the requirements that I have this time around? Well, obviously it needs to be smaller than the traditional six foot by four foot table. Currently I have this coffee table in my basement. That's approximately three feet by three feet. It's a little bit smaller than that. Maybe I could make a table that was roughly this footprint to replace this item already in my basement. The table needs to look pretty to a certain degree. I'm going to use this table on a new series here on my channel called Kill Your Friends. This is a long, long overdue Patreon goal that we hit many, many months ago. So since it's going to be on camera, it needs to look good. It needs to be able to accommodate the game systems that I play most often, which is Guild Ball, which is played on a three foot by three foot, and also Age of Sigmar, which is played on a six foot by four foot. Now I know I just said the table needs to be smaller than a six foot by four foot, but I believe this table should be able to expand when I need it to, and then reduce in size when I don't need it to be six foot by four foot. Traditionally, tables increase in length with something called table leaves, but our last and final requirement kind of ruins that idea. It needs to have a pit, sort of like this dice box here, to contain things like dice and other game components from falling off of the edge of the table during the course of playing. That's quite a list of requirements, so let's try to conceptualize it. Maybe it could be a box that like flattens out and gets bigger. But that means in its large configuration, it will no longer have a pit. Sometimes when you're hashing something out, it's good to start drawing something, even if you know it won't meet your requirements. When you physically realize something, sometimes you can get more ideas. Maybe a four foot by four foot box that hinges open on the ends to add an additional two feet to the length. Well, we retain the pit kind of, but we lose it on the ends. But this gives me an idea. What if we have a four foot by three foot box that swings open to double in length for a six foot by four foot? I like the idea of having to deal with a supporting leg, but I think we're really close to nailing a design. What if the table was four feet by three feet and had two layers and the top layer was split in half and hinged open like a book, adding its one foot to either side for a total of six by four? And that kind of actually works out. Let's give it a shot. I should probably design this thing in SketchUp or some 3D modeler, or I don't have to, and I can struggle every step of the way. I wonder which one I do. I went to my local lumber yard called Young Bloods, which is an awesome name for the first time ever. And yes, I felt and looked like an idiot with my 96 Honda Civic, but this place was awesome. It was like a candy shop, but for wood. There was all kinds of cool stuff there. And I ended up with two inch thick hard maple. Now the next part I have no video for. I don't have access to things like a planer, a jointer, or a table saw, the tools that you need to mill rough saw lumber like I purchased at the lumber yard. So I signed up for a class at a local high school that gave me access to these tools and a lot more. So I got my lumber milled, I got it cut to length and width, and I also started to lay out some of the joinery for it. And that's where we start our journey. First things first, my shop is an utter mess. Let's clean it up. Now on to actual woodworking. I had cut a dado slot in the sides of my table to receive a half inch maple veneered plywood, but the curvature of the dado blades was still there. I needed to finish off this dado slot with my router. This is gonna take way too long. We need to set up a jig. 
To guide the router, I screwed in guides into my workbench and also pieces for the wood to slot into. I was feeling like Jimmy Duresta until... I just realized something stupid. Since this slot is in center, when I flip this thing over to do the other side, the guides are off. It's no longer uh, aligned for it. So I can only do one side of all of these stretchers and then I need to redo the jig to do the other side. Feels bad, man. Oh well, at least it still worked for half of the ends. Except it didn't really. I'm having a lot of problems trying to get this jig to be perfectly dead on with the data that is already established. It's always a little bit too close or a little bit too far away. So I'm just gonna freehand the rest of the dados and then clean it up with chisels because this process is taking too long. Look at how many attempts I had to make to try to get the, the guides to line up and I still couldn't do it. <laughs> Okay, maybe not like Jimmy Duresta. Now it was time to clean up the ends with chisels like previously mentioned. In hindsight, it would have been easier just to do the whole slot with the router. It would have made this a two-step process instead of a three-step process. Next, what I did was install some dowel joinery with a simple doweling jig that I picked up on Amazon. A link to all the tools that I'm using can be found in the description, by the way. I kind of struggled to clamp this jig in one of the two orientations. I'd love some suggestions on how one can drill dowels into the face of wood as opposed to the end grain. Is the only solution a super long clamp? I cut some 3 8 inch dowels and rounded off the ends and installed them with wood glue. And now the moment of truth. Does it fit? Heck yeah it does, but it doesn't exactly line up how I laid out. I'll need to do some shaping later to make this stuff look like I knew what I was doing. Unlike a table that has four corners, my table is essentially two tables, one on top of the other, so I have to do all this stuff twice as much. I also messed up along the way. This is one of the long boards. The dowel is supposed to go on this surface, not this surface. Unfortunately, I'm a retard, and I already put a whole end grain. Sometimes, I just don't know. I even made a little segment about transferring the line to the other side of the mark, and I still got it on the wrong side. This is what happens when you do carpentry at five in the morning. You just, you're just an idiot. The next thing to do was to cut out a large portion of the side table so that when it opens like a book, there's no side to block it off from the rest of the table. The perfect tool for this long ripping operation would be a table saw, but all I have is a garage sale circular saw that I picked up for five bucks. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the cut capacity to cut through my sides, so I went and bought a bigger corded circular saw and then proceeded to rip the sections out. I had to plunge cut from one end to the other as I was keeping the dowel section of my apron at max width. This meant I needed to do a cross cut on the ends to finish the cut. I figured the best tool for this was a jigsaw. My crappy hand-me-down jigsaw. Well, this one sucks and caused a ton of tear outs. I went and got a nicer one and some new blades. I hope my wife doesn't look at the bank account. It's amazing how much better this thing cuts. I was referencing against a square to get a nice straight cut. I then realized that I don't need a jigsaw at all and the best tool for this job would be my miter saw. So I used that for the rest of these cuts. To finish up the cut, I used a handsaw. The circular saw left some saw marks, so I cleaned them up with a chisel. While I do this totally mindless task, let's shout out some patrons. Big love goes to Waldo Jeffers, James Long, Josh Biggs, Walter L. Bennett, Joshua Ratcliffe, Matthew Miller, Justin Costa, Chuck Lagore Bloodbeard, I have a feeling that's not your real name, Nico Navala, Ken Frankovich, Captain Dangerous, Carl Sandor, George Reed, Josh Whitehurst, Matt Rayford, Jonas Anderlund, T.D. McDonald, Max Guernan, Grant Tony Mayberry, and Dave Hanlon. Thank you guys so much for being my patrons and supporting my work here on YouTube. It means a lot to me that Patreon is my biggest source of income as a YouTube content creator. It really is validating to have people think that what you do is worth actual money. It is it, it's very, it's incredibly validating and I can't say thank you enough. So thank you to those new patrons and also all of my current patrons. If you're curious about my Patreon account and the rewards that I have to offer in it, you can find a link to it in the description below. Look at how much waste 
on this maple, I ended up with this plan. And, and this is gonna be the case for all of these longer pieces with dowels in them. If I had planned a little bit better, I could have probably made two of these from one piece of that maple that I had and then glued on blocks on the end for my joinery. I could have probably saved at least 30% on the lumber that I bought if I just planned a little bit better. Let me tell you, failure is the best teacher. I can't, I can't say it enough. <laughs> During one of my dry fits, disaster struck. Oh, heavens. A little bit of glue and you're none the wiser. Except that I didn't get it on perfectly. <laughs> Some of the dowel sections of my table sides were a little big, so I trimmed them down with a miter saw. Now that the sides were cut out, it was time once again to make sure I was on the right track. So this is how the final table arrangement is going to look. There's going to be a four foot by three foot playable surface with about a half an inch of a pit on the top. And then there's gonna be some split here in the middle and it's going to book open to reveal a six foot by four foot section with about an inch and a half of a pit. Uh, so this looks right. This is what I want it to look like with these holes in the side. But the problem is that the sheet of plywood, you can't see over here that I cut at that woodworking class that I took is cut just like an inch or three quarter of the inch too small in all dimensions. Um, now this dimension doesn't matter because I can cut, I'm going to cut this in half so it'll book open, but this dimension can't be, sh can't be shortened at all. So we have a problem that I don't know how to resolve other than by going and buying another sheet of three quarter inch plywood. Which I'd rather not do because it's kind of expensive and I've already wasted a lot of wood. <laughs> Despite what I just said, I bought not only one sheet of plywood, but two sheets of maple veneered plywood. Let me explain. I needed to cut a rectangle that was 49 inches in length and 37 inches in width. Any guesses on the dimensions of a sheet of plywood? It's four feet by eight feet or 48 inches by 96 inches. I needed two of these rectangles, meaning that it was literally impossible to get two from a single sheet of plywood. If this sheet was four feet by nine feet, I would have been golden. This is why planning is super important. If I would have known this was going to happen, I would have just undersized my table a little bit to accommodate the joinery that I wanted to do and the sheets of plywood that are commercially available. No, instead I ended up buying three sheets of plywood, spending about 150 bucks when I only needed to spend 50. Don't be like me, plan your builds. I cut the new plywood and did a test fit, and guess what? I still had a tiny eighth inch gap on one side. I'm guessing I forgot to account for the width of my circular saw blade. In an attempt to fix the gap, I thought I could shorten part of my dowel section, but... Remember how I said I was gonna fix this gap here by trimming this down shorter so it would, it would close more? Well, I'm an idiot, and I trimmed this face. So now there's a discrepancy between this and this, you see that little gap right there? And I didn't fix the gap at all. Sometimes I am just such a, a screw up that it makes me just want to throw in the towel and give up. <laughs> so I added a reminder and opened up the dry fit again to find dowels. Oh yeah, remember that thing I installed for joinery? You can't cut those off. Scott from the future here to crap on Scott from the past. Instead of cutting the dowels off, you could have just cut the section with the holes to shorten the whole thing to get rid of that gap. But instead, you let it stick around as a constant reminder of your failure. Way to suck. Time to glue up the bottom portion of my table. I used Type Bond 3, which has a longer working time as this would be rather complicated. I used a brush in the dado slots to get full glue coverage. I also added some clamping calls to the four feet sides of the plywood to glue the plywood down to the apron below it. I need more clamps. Next, I had to do basically the same thing again, except this time I had to split the table in half. This part would be the top part that would open like a book. So I dry fit it all together after cutting in half the three foot apron and marked where to cut the plywood. After it was all in pieces, it was time to glue it up one side at a time. Next, I started to work on the legs. I would connect them with an apron. So I made up a jig to help me cut the right slot in the right spot on all my legs. My legs are square, so I can just rotate it to get it in the right spot. 
Unfortunately, I didn't have a flush trim bit. I needed the follower bearing on top, not the one on bottom. One Amazon trip later and I have the right bits. I hogged out the material and then squared up the joint with the chisel because the round bit of the router leaves round corners. The next, I cut the aprons to length based on the dimensions of the table. At this point, any plan I had was thrown out the window and I was just basing my dimensions on what actually existed. I snuck up on the length, cutting my aprons with my miter saw little by little until I had the perfect fit. Since I only have two bar clamps, I glued up the two halves at a time and then did the full assembly after they had both dried. At this point, a lot of stuff could be shaped. I had to fill some gaps with wood feather and knock down some proud edges with a hand plane. Next, I needed to glue on the inside pit wall for the top halves of the table. I didn't cut these to size yet. With these glued in place, it was time to see what this thing looked like loosely put together. But now we have to do the thing that terrifies me the most, and that is install these little hinges that I have here on these outside edges so that it can open up to make a six by four. By the way, this coffee table is massive. Uh, this is, I'm not sure if this counts as a coffee table anymore. Um, but I have several concerns with uh, these little hinges. One being that, you know, there's not a whole lot of play in them, but they're too weak. I have some bigger screws uh, that are about an inch long that are you know, countersunk that will go into this wood. Hopefully that'll be strong enough. Um, but I'm just concerned about strength. I'm also concerned about alignment. Like the top halves put together aren't exactly aligned with the bottom half. So I'm concerned that they're not, they're going to be, you know, misaligned. I'm concerned that, you know, when I install this hardware that it's going to work in one orientation, like closed, but then when I try to open it, it's going to like jam or something. Um, there are a lot of concerns that I have about this step. It is the scariest step of this whole table process easily. Um, but it's the thing that makes this table what I need it to be. Um, so, kind of have to do it. Uh, so we're just going to have to figure it out. <laughs> All right. Enough bitching. Let's do it. To give myself the best chance to have proper alignment, I clamped a straight edge to both pieces. I was also clamping down on the other side of the table, but you can't see it in this shot. I used my speed square to make sure my hinges were squared with the edges. I also flattened the connecting area with a hand plane to make sure the hinge was flat and not skewed when the table was fully open. My plan was to mark out a square for the hinge and then route it away a small amount and then finish up the square hole with a chisel. I wanted the hinge to be flush with the surface of the table. The problem was that the hinge was nearly the width of the table side, so when I went in with a chisel, I accidentally knocked out the very thin border. So I just took my router with a straight edge guide and routed along the whole little area. It's worth mentioning that using a big heavy router, when it isn't fully stabilized on a flat surface, it's kind of asking for a disaster. The router could tip over and eat into your wood. I will avoid doing this in the future. It was time to test the hinges. Holy shit, dude. However, I celebrated a little too early for a world of pain was coming my way. When I was drilling one of the screws, one of the heads got ripped off, so now I gotta figure out how to get that out of there. Yeah, that'll be easy. Well, I broke it. <laughs> I think my only option now is to try to bore it out and then create a hole and then fill that hole with a dowel and then drill back into that dowel. So, let's do that. What else could go wrong? Got some more bad news here. I was uh, unscrewing this other side, and this screw right here uh, just broke off while I was unscrewing it. Uh, and these ones just don't come out. They just spin and spin. So I am breaking up. Come on, Pass Scott, you're losing credibility here. Give us some good news. So I got some good news and some bad news. Good news, I got the screw out. Bad news is I broke two drill bits trying to do it. One of them I was able to extract, but the other one is embedded somewhere in here. <laughs> I don't know where it is. Um, so that's fun. And also I am having an, the same issue I'm having over there with these uh, screw heads. I can't get them out. 
What I ended up doing to resolve the embedded drill bit was to drill it out with a metal cutting drill bit and then I filled the hole with a wooden dowel. I later found out that the reason my screws weren't coming out was because they had sheared off about a quarter of the way down, right where the threading started. This happened on six out of eight of my screws I installed, so now I had a massive problem. Six out of eight of the holes that I was supposed to use for installing my hinges had three quarters of a screw embedded about a quarter of an inch down in the wood. What now, Pascot? What are you gonna do? Okay, I solved the problem with the screws and I didn't film it. I'm sorry. I was mad and I just wanted to get it done. <laughs> um, this section in right here had screws embedded in it about a quarter of the inch way and I didn't know how to get them out. I tried to drill it out with a metal cutting drill bit and some cutting oil, but I <laughs> just snapped the drill bit off in the hole, making the problem worse. So I took a circular saw and I cut this line right here and then I hacked the rest of it off with a chisel, kind of cleaned it up a little bit and then glued a new piece of maple in there, trying to match the uh, grain as best as I could and then flush trimmed it, sanded it smooth, did some filling with some uh, wood putty and now I'm going to redo the hinges on this side again uh, with the new screws that I got and if that works all I have to do then is just sand this whole thing uh, and apply varnish and it'll be done. So. Hopefully the hinges work. I'm sure it'll go as smoothly as you claim. Okay, we're kind of back to square one before we had a catastrophic failure. And now the hinging mechanism seems to be working. It can't close the full way because the new screw heads have bigger, taller heads so that when you get to a certain point, the screw heads start to interfere with one another. Um, that's an easy fix though, we just need to route this location where they're going deeper. Um, a more elegant solution would be to have screw heads that are flush with the surface. Um, but at this point, I kind of want this thing just to work. So I think I'm just going to route a deeper slot for the hinges. Okay, so I routed the slots deeper and I checked to make sure that I had clearance by using a straight edge. And I was closing it and it still wasn't closing fully. And I'm like, what is going on? Okay, so then I figured it out. No matter how deep the slot is, if the screw heads don't allow for enough clearance for the hinge to fully close, as you can see in this little demonstration, no depth in the kind of slot here is gonna matter. You, you need to have screw heads that give enough clearance for the thing to close. So it's a nice, two nice parallel plates. And so that means I need to buy new screws or I need to file these down flatter so there is more clearance for them. And I'm gonna to try to file them first because I have a lot of them and it could potentially work. Um, so let's try that first. Unfortunately, my plan to flatten the screw heads was unsuccessful. The plates would not be parallel. I needed flat screw heads. So I made my 74th trip to Home Depot and got some number 10 flat head screws. I also bought a metal countersink bit because I figured I would need to enlarge the hole on the hinges because I was using a much larger screw now. Success! It was used parallel. Everything should work now, right? Right? You guys wanna see something stupid? Oh, it doesn't close fully. And why doesn't it close fully? Because I'm an idiot and I made that little gap there too big. So now these corners make contact before it can fully close. Holy f <laughs> How can one person make so many mistakes? <laughs> Jesus Christ, Scott, get it together. Fast forward a few hours of repair and after fixing that minor problem and installing both hinges, I can happily say that they both went together correctly and they both open and close nicely. It is such a relief to be done with the hinge part. Next, I sanded everything with 180 grit, followed by 220. I didn't film any of this because I wanted to spare my camera the literal sandstorm that followed. I finished the table in water-based polyurethane because it dries fast and I needed this to be done. I applied a single coat, it raised the grain, I sanded that back with a sanding sponge, and then I vacuumed away the polyurethane dust and used a tack cloth on the hard to reach areas. 
And then I applied one final coat of poly, assembled it, and this project was finally done. The table turned out okay. The maple is beautiful despite my many mistakes. There is plenty of chip out. The wood filler I used didn't match well. The finish is slightly uneven in areas. A lot of spots are unsquare, but it works. To be honest, I'm terrified to use the hinges. I think the number one comment in the comment section is gonna be that those hinges are not strong enough to support the weight of the table. And you know what? You are probably right. They can support being extended for a few moments, but I don't know what their longevity is going to be. I consider this table to be a, a prototype. As much as it pains me to say that, when it needs to open and stay open for a long period of time, I'll probably put some kind of temporary leg right here against the floor so it is supported. But if someone was looking to make this table and have the hinge idea with, without having to need another leg, you could have a hinge that ran around the entire perimeter of the table and your, your table lip right here could simply just be metal. The whole, the whole edge could be metal. And you could have your hinges right here and you could have screws every eight inches or so. You could paint it all black, it would look really nice. And that could work out really well, but you would need to know how to fabricate that hinge. And it's a pretty simple fabrication, it's just a matter of knowing how to weld, which I don't know how to do and was not willing to figure out. <laughs> so for now, it's going to stay like this in a, in a three foot by four foot configuration. And then when I do need to fold it open, it is going to be supported. I learned so much about carpentry and about myself in the process of making this coffee table. And I wanna share the lessons that I learned with you. If you're looking to get into carpentry or maybe any type of hobby, don't start out with a massive project. If you get in way over your head, you can give up and peter out really easily. To be honest, if I wasn't beholden to YouTube to make a video about this process, I would have given up a whole heck of a lot sooner. Number two, use plywood on your carpentry projects as much as you can. Hardwood is cool, but rough sawn hardwood requires very expensive machinery. It takes up a lot of space to properly treat, namely a planer, a jointer, and a table saw. You can get some of these things already planed and jointed. That's called S4 wood, straight on all four sides. But oftentimes that wood has a bend or a curvature to it because of moisture gaining or moisture loss. And so you still need to kind of clean them up. So if you can, avoid hardwood and use plywood, maybe veneer the edges to hide it if you want as much as you can. Test your cuts and your fits for joinery on waste wood that isn't important and not the precious wood that you need to keep around for your end product. There are plenty of joints on the leg specifically that are a little bit loose because I was still kind of adjusting the jig that I was using to cut those slots on the pieces that are supposed to go in my final table. And finally, number four, make a solid plan. The more complicated your project is, the more specific and detail-oriented your plan should be. It, this, this whole video is basically proof and an example of all of the terrible things that can happen if you don't have a proper plan. Money can be wasted, tears can be shed. I turned into a shell of a man. Just make a plan, okay? I am so glad that this project is done. You, you, you really can't understand how much of a burden this table was on me for the past three weeks of working on it. Just endlessly so many problems kept cropping up i'm really happy to get back on youtube publish a video and i'm really looking forward to making normal stuff a little bit and i gotta play some catch up if you liked this carpentry oriented video i have another one where i made a crappy table if you want to watch that you can find a link in the top right hand corner i have a patreon account 
and also a merch store that has a bunch of fun things that you can check out. Both items linked in the description below. I have an Amazon affiliate link that you can use when you're shopping on Amazon to support the channel for free. Subscribe or die. And most importantly, don't forget to <laughs> my minutes.